Never forget how we do that bill term. Never. Oh, oh, I know. I never. Devastated and, bill. And, uh, so um, I'm going to call to order the Westford oh, Conservation yeah. Commission meeting of Wednesday, September 28th, 2022, starting at 7 p.m. Um, the first item on the agenda is open forum. Do anybody have items for open forum? No. Nope. Matt, do you have something for open forum? I do. Thank you. Um, as per usual, special town meeting is Monday, October 17th at, at 7 p.m. at the Westford Academy Auditorium. Um, please do attend. Uh, there are some items on the uh, warrant. Or the warrant. Um, in the meeting, I think in the meeting packet, um, we received some photos from the uh, LSP, nope, maybe we didn't include that. Maybe I got that after I got back. Um, the LSP for 12 North Main Street um, provided some photos. The entire site is state, the disturbed area is stabilized. Um, some of the rains the last couple of months have certainly helped out and um, got the uh, seeds to germinate and stabilize. They'll be removing the erosion controls tomorrow. Um, and Included in the revised meeting packet uh, that, that went out today for the commission um, was the survey on solar siting in Massachusetts. Um, this was from the Mass Department of Energy Resources. Um, it's a, uh, they're soliciting input for um, how solar siting um, the advent, the potential benefits of solar siting at different um, uses. For example, um, should solar siting on tops of buildings be um, promoted more so than you know clearing in a cleared forest, you know, in a in a parcel that where forest needs to be cleared? Um, I took it as a um, citizen. Um, it's was updated and it was active as of last uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, so if the commission, yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, just a position on, on on solar farms and and solar and where you want to see it. Sounds like it's priority. Yes, it? yeah, it's pri prior to you know it's uh, like you priority. know more desirable you know on tops Even of buildings, less areas. desirable in turn you know in forest areas, things like that. Okay, so well, it would be forest area very yes. long if they put one up that. It's the first thing that would come down. I think there's some people outside. Yeah, no, yeah. they can, yeah, they can. Again, it's you know, trying to I understand. Yeah. put them all in the green room for. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, but you're welcome. I think it's the first. Yeah, Potential yeah. candidates. Yeah. With, uh, we'll be our uh, commissioners. All right. And yeah. ones, um, ones in the green room, ones who are trying to, you know, yeah. make it there. Still 703. Well, um, which yeah, which clock do we go by? The one on the wall or another one? You have I've no always you have gone. On I've always gone by the one on the wall. Yeah, I've always yeah. gone by the one on the wall. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, um, did you have anything else for open form? Nope. That was my last. Okay. Um, so moving on to our 7.05 p.m. agenda item. It's an interview with Michael Ruggieri. Is he here? Okay. I don't. So go take a look out front. But you want to take some of the discussion items for a minute? Of course. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Um, well, 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 and actually, um, so d does anybody else have anything for open forum? Nope. Okay. No. So let's work through those discussion items. Yeah, we can yeah. Well okay. give him time to come. Maybe you've got stuck in traffic. Um, broken bench. Yes, um, there was a... Um, a 
along the Stony Brook Trail, I we received an email, I think when I got back to um, town, um, that the memorial bench for Nancy Eberiel um, and a minuet um, was broken, a large tree fell onto it. Um, I've I uh, went out today Whoa. and took it. Yeah, I was. Um, that must I, have been I, one big tree. Well, you can yeah, see the rest of it. I, Look at it back there in the upper right. right there. My my photo my photo uh, abilities. I've tried to. You no, know, I can see it. Um, yeah. That's yeah. the tree. Um, the friends of uh, the Western Conservation Trust actually was the ones who um, did that. Uh, end up cutting. So um, the resident who reached out wanted to know if it had been reported. Kind of or sort of, but okay. I was now notified. Um, and she asked if it will be replaced. I've reached out to Garside, um, but it's they're vacation. He'll yeah. be back tomorrow. I, I'm still waiting for my husband's stone. Okay, so. well, <laughs> that was the that was the voicemail I got as well. Yeah, we'll um, so tomorrow. I'll kind of table this. I just wanted to give the, I mean, see where. Again, we don't really have an estimate for what you know a replacement uh, bench. Did you top. do the bench. I don't know. I, again. I, Odds are it's, it's like his style of bench. It's Westford. Well, this, is, this is the yeah. This is the no, grandson. it looks like his style. You realize this it's, is the grandson. Who has the business? Right? Um, so I uh, I will certainly have something uh, regarding this for the Which next. Which is just a slab. I mean the, the the two footings look like they're okay. It's just a slab. Yeah, that's yeah. This, I mean even actually the kind of right footing does look to have bent. Okay. Um, so. I don't know. Any I, writing or anything on? Yeah, the, yeah it's uh, Nancy, you can uh, kind of, yeah, we'll see. burial and minuet. Yeah. That's what okay. it says. Um, I think that's what it says on it. Yeah, answer Muriel. Um, Muriel, so. I see it now, yeah, I see it. Yeah, um, just something to make the commission aware. I'll, I'm looking to get an estimate, um, and um, it was actually a really nice spot to go. Okay. Great, great day for we'll a walk at Stony on. Brook. Um, okay. So. Uh, but nobody was sitting there. And here's the approximate location. Okay. Along Stony Brook. The cabin? Yes. Um, the uh, Bob Wischkevich, um reached out regarding the um, he was looking to preserve some of the cabins on the girl's side, or the girl side, the Camp Walkie um, side of East Boston camps. Um, I, this again, this is where we've, I reached out to the town manager's office in terms of actually understanding how to, the actual process. Um, and the first would be for the commission to declare, declare them as surplus, at which point the town manager's office can go through the uh, process of okay. um, uh, uh, you know advertising and you know Get disposing yeah of seeing if seeing if there is interest and okay. going through the uh, per appropriate procurement process um, they are located up oh, here's oh, we included Eric's email great um, and here's just for frame of reference the buildings down here um, building two in this corner the kind of ang angled building is the bathhouse. Um, the other four are the named cabins and uh, building one is the actual lodge, which um, has a hole in the roof. Um, it's, it's a what? Uh, hole in the roof. Um, and most of kind of the open area shown on this map. Completely uh, filled in with pine. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with white pine seedlings. It's, it's, yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's kind of impressive actually. Yeah. Um, so one other, uh, end of this also we need to make sure that anything make sure that it would be consistent with the conservation restriction um, held by the Westford Land Preservation Foundation but as an initial step you know if the Commission uh, determines them to be surplus we can start kind of working Does through that process that effect? yes if I didn't know if there was gonna if there was any discussion or anything of such okay Jim uh, I've been up there a few times, and the, the buildings are in bad shape. I, I didn't know there was a roof, a hole through the roof on the biggest building, but they're all covered with graffiti, and I don't know what's gone on inside those buildings over the last uh, 10 years or so, but they aren't, aren't of much value. 
and you saw the uh, the note that Bob had done a little bit of research, I guess, and found that the buildings are ju just a couple of feet too big to be taken out as a um, and moved on the public roads without elaborate uh, elaborate safety con conditions, hiring uh, local police, state police, having you know wide load trucks, shutting down roads, those kind of things. It sounds like that'll be a, a, a huge increase in the cost of, of moving one. Mm -hmm. uh, buildings aren't worth much, but if you start charging, I mean, if there's a charge associated with moving them that's phenomenal, it, it's just not going to make much, much sense for anybody to bid on them. I'm all for declaring them surplus. We tried to do this once before, probably 50, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say it was a while yeah. back. And nothing happened with it. For uh, these? I, what, excuse me for these cabins yes for these same cabins because yeah. it's in the, in the master plan for the property that the buildings on that side will to go. Or not be used mm. for um, any camp act operations or activities so anyway if we declare them surplus and the town nobody in town wants to pick them up that's fine but then we've just done a big exercise and nothing happens oh. there's also a possibility we could donate them to the uh, if, if it doesn't work out as sale donate them to the Westford Fire Department. They could make use of them in a training exercises inside a darkened building or burn whatever. In a, and they'll do it in a safe manner, not during a drought period, all that. But all that's contingent on Westford Land Preservation Foundation okaying any any activity with regards to the conservation restriction. But I think we could have we could move down that path to get rid of those buildings. Because right now they're an, an eyesore and I, I don't know, it's just a, it attracts, it's an attractive nuisance, I guess you could call it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marilyn? I just wanted to make a motion if, if you're ready for it. Declare them surplus. Okay. Um, well, actually, um, any comments from the audience? I no. Like, I like the fire department idea. Name, <laughs> name for the record, please. Oh. Um, Go up to the microphone. Oh. Just state your name for the record, just for the main staker. Thanks. Uh, I think the most thing that made sense uh, that occurred was. Most cost effective and provide value for training. Thank Can you, you just give us Can we have your name for the record, please? Warren, on the spot. Warren I don't know what they do. Uh, oh. Wilson Lane, Western Mass. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. 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 Do you have a second? Um, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Yeah. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So. We have declared them surplus. Yep. Yep. I will prepare a memo to, for the town manager. When you uh, talk to Jody, fill her in on if it doesn't get for sale. Yeah, to kind of give the other options as no well. No other department that's, wants to use them. No, that's a great uh, mm -hmm. idea. Again, I think we need to want to go through that first process of, yes. you know, seeing if, I mean, yep. I don't know, maybe, you know, if instead of them being, um, you know, removed whole, which obviously doesn't seem to be. Um, it could be an disassemble. opportunity to, you know, yeah. disassemble. I mean, because there is some interesting you artwork. You can cut it in half. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things they can do. I've seen people cut a building in half. All of them cost so money. You so. can do yeah, it. But you never know who's interested until you make right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of the first start. So that, that's the first step, and then we can, you know, so move down there. But I, I appreciate the commission taking uh, for their commission's consideration okay. on this. Okay. Um, so. I have no update on Sycamore Cypress, although I'm sure Jim does. When are we going to be planted? Very soon. I need to nice. get the. I need to get the highway department. I need to sign the um, purchase order or the quote um, and coordinate with the highway department. Okay. okay. It works. We have a few of our candidates. Um, and we can probably sneak in 115 Concord Road. Okay. The enforcement order update. Um, the uh, LSP, um, the LSP provided the lab reports for the of the um, uh, monitoring test hole samples, um, and they were all below the detectable uh, levels of. Um, the detectable level or the, or the reportable level sorry i thought there were some that were there were a couple that looked like they exceeded them um well they exceeded the reporting limit and they looked like get, yeah reporting limit they seemed like they were mostly gasoline components not not kerosene but 
gasoline. Yep, I was looking at the same thing. That's what I noticed. Yep. And it wasn't, you know, it didn't say gasoline, but it was the components, hexane and octane and all that kind of stuff. Those are also pesticides. Yeah, but I don't think it exceeds the cleanup standard. Or the, the heavy metals, the, I yeah, should the, say. the cleanup standards that were used uh, for pesticides. required for. Um, so radiation. even though it's above the rep reporting level, that just means what? Do you get it? Reporting the reporting level is what the um, is the minimum concentrate is the minimum amount that the laboratory will um, detect. So. I don't know if that's what all of that's data because some of that was bolded. And I thought that yeah. since it was bolded, that it exceeded some sort of well, reporting I mean, requirement. It, I mean, so this, I thought the bolded was that it was, I mean, so um, looking like at. Like on page eight. Yeah, uh, page eight, thank you. Um, <laughs> so the reporting limit is the minimum amount. Yeah. And, and that's what he can detect, the report, you know. Right. But this look at the results. Limit. The result of like the arsenic is what? You know, tenfold over the reporting limit. But it's not, but it's below, or as the LSP. But it's below the, the, what they have to report to the mass DEP is what you're what, saying? What or? It's below the concentrate, the well. level that mass DEP would require a cleanup. Seems like we're all pretty unclear about what the report. Says. I can <laughs> get clear. I can get clarification okay, from the okay, LSP for the next that, one. That but we've had, you know, we have re we have lab results. Again, this, you know, yeah. came in before I was. Well, uh, that's what these are. These are just lab results, but they're not saying whether or not, you know, the concentrations are reportable right. for whatever for a cleanup. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll find out. Yes, I will get better clarification for the next yeah, commission meeting. Okay, that is. Um, so one of them is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to okay. that So we're going to move on to our 7:15 p.m. agenda item. To with our interview with um, Noel Almeida. So it's a no show with uh, Michael Ruggieri. So something happened, obviously. Yep. He was interested. I'm sure something's happened. So hmm. we'll have to find out. Now, you had gotten confirmation from Michael that he was aware of the appointment? Yes, when we changed it. I haven't received anything recently. Um. You can okay. that. So, good evening, Noel. Do you want to come up to the table and um, get the hot seat, by the way? Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's see. Do we want to take the questions yeah, in the order? Welcome. First, welcome. And thanks, yeah. for, yeah. thanks for applying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, you want to, can I start then? Sure. Do you want, Nella, do you want to give us a brief background of yourself and maybe why you're interested in being part of the commission? Uh, sure. Um, I work in the consulting industry. Uh, I run marketing programs for four clients, uh, right now it's and uh, I run teams of people who do different developers, coders, uh, business people, analysts. Um, uh, so my goal is to make the clients happy. Yeah, I keep my people happy so they don't quit. And keep my company profitable. That's what I do for a living. Um, I am interested in conservation, conservation uh, commission uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I've been uh, with my wife farming for several years, so really interested in land use making sure men, you know, stay tight for us, because I love the agriculture, and I've done that. Um, also, I was a member of the Recycling Commission for a little bit, helped out there, and I think that's where I met Eric. And uh, I was, I had two films on the energy commission. So, I, I did six years there, you know. Ebbed and flowed in terms of our uh, responsibilities there, but uh, that was interesting. And more recently, I've been a lot more active in the scouts. One of the main, uh, the mainstays of their program is conservation. Uh, they love to go hiking, swimming, canoeing, and all those activities. And uh, so I normally see it from terms of you folks are saving wetlands and everything else for these people to use. I actually see them actually using it. And they do activities once, twice a month. I've been with them, you know, we've been different places. I don't know all the trips to go camping and 
<laughs> That's my question. Okay. Um, Noel, would you like to um, ask your question? Yes. Um, are you focused on the more of the details of a certain situation, or would you look at the big picture? Probably both, but uh, let me tell you why. So I look at Matt and his role in you know, the people he works with as being the detail experts in the day to day. And I do that for a living in my job, but this is not my job. So I would like to know those pieces well enough to contribute, but I would, I would stand back and look more, especially in the beginning, from the bigger picture. Understanding you know, different pieces of what you do, I you know, it's a broad yeah, it's pretty large because you're focused a lot on building and building restrictions and you know the hundred foot and whatever else is involved. Um, so I think I initially spent a lot of time with that, trying to step back and see where this happened. So for example, coastlines and shorelines, you know, there that's part of the living that. Um, <clears throat> a question on that, or, or yeah, just another one? The next question. Another, I, another question. Another topic. I'll give them. Um, we're going right down, so I'll do the okay. next one. All right. Okay. So, Noel, um, what can you tell us about the Wetlands Protection Act and the local wetlands bylaw of the town of Westford? feet is building for rest with its hundred feet and 200 feet if there's moving water or a stream or something um, and then so I looked at the eight reasons you know so look stepping back to Noel's question are you looking at the details or the you know the bigger picture why do we do this right um, so the eight reasons why we protect you know the, the resources but the answer your question but the hundred is that enough or yeah, I just, you know, I just wanted to know what you could tell us about them. That's fine. Okay. Um, I, I read through it. It was 246 pages. I, just, I, was like, <laughs> I could not go through the, it wasn't West, but it was the general act. And I was like, and, you know, sub clauses, I, I couldn't last. I couldn't go through it quickly. So I think I have to hunt and peck, right, for what's important. And I think I'll see that as we go along. Okay. <clears throat> so, no. Have you had an opportunity to watch or to attend any of our meetings? I have. I've watched a few, I think, on, on, uh, online, and mm -hmm. I've been to two or three recently. Okay, Jim? Uh, one of the things that's difficult on the Conservation Commission is uh, balancing the interests of private property owners who pay good money for a piece of property that they want to use for their own enjoyment and the uh, interests of the uh, Wetlands Protection Act and our town bylaw. Uh, how would you balance the, uh, those, those competing interests? You know, the private property owners on one hand doing, wanting to do what they want to do with their own property versus the Wetland Act and the town bylaw. That's a tough one because I believe in, uh, you know, we have rights as individuals. We own a piece of land. We have the rights that come with it. But then Wetland Protection Act, the, the Wetlands Protection Act may, you know, impinge on those rights in some ways of some manner of speaking. So I think a good example would be the one meeting I attended recently where there was someone who had some land that bordered a basketball, had a board, basketball court or some play area that yeah. you know, infringed on the, the land and you all came up with a good resolution and said, all right, can you offset this with something else somewhere? So to me, I think you look for compromises, you know, as long as people are doing something in good faith uh, and that's you know just that's what I would do. I'd learn from you folks, especially the first several several months. And just look at what you guys are doing and um, take your you know 
take hints from the tone you use and what you would do. But it's, it's a hard one. I mean, obviously, you want to stick to the law, <coughs> make sure they're complying. But then also, if they're doing everything within their rights and you know, in good faith, you want to help them out. All right, thank you. In your experience, what's the most valuable attribute in working with people to help bring groups to agreement? And probably your, your, ex your professional experience is right up this balance. Uh, I think understanding where they come from is helpful. So, again, attending these meetings, I've seen people of different, you know, different um, professions come by. You know, attorneys. I've seen land use experts. You know, and people represent themselves. But it's always hard because they're not experts. So the experts, how you deal with the experts, I was very um, impressed with the professional way you dealt with. You know, the attorneys and the land use experts who came here because they and they also knew what to expect from you folks um, compromises is helpful I think uh, the hardest thing is when there's a conflict and you, know, you can't resolve it uh, and there's no escalation point here other than DEP right because uh, beyond conservation commission the next recourse is the DEP am I correct uh. Pe people can appeal our decisions. You can appeal yeah. the DEP, right? Or to you. Mm -hmm. But is it to you or to the DEP? They appeal to DEP first, right. and with the local bylaw, um, any appeals also need to be to the um, uh, 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 Middlesex County Court. Okay. Uh, uh, it has to be. Uh, appealed under the land court as well. So yeah, I don't know if I've answered your question completely, but I think it's a tough one. You, you folks bring the expertise you know, in terms of what you have and what Matt has, and you know, they, on the other side, bring the professional expertise, you know, the attorneys and the okay. land use management people, and, and you hope you get them all to agree. Right, like you said, it was compromised, and then if there is none, then they, have, they can appeal it. Right. The EPA. And I'm not sure, I haven't attended enough meetings to see how many of these go to, to appeal. Very few. Very few. Thank I, goodness. I, my, goal is as, <laughs> yeah, my goal is as few as possible. <laughs> right. Yeah, our goal is not to have it go that way either. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> to have it all set up here. We try to find the compromise as well. Although, you know, you know, We've had a couple of our charges, days. you know, we don't want to see any adverse impact. Right. So you have to look at, you know, what's being proposed, you know, how potentially it could have adverse impacts and, you know, to resource areas. And, you know, sometimes folks can't always have everything they want, but we try to get, you know, we try to find that balance where they're getting something and their project is moving forward. I th think what you don't want is someone to go and do something negative behind your back, because they are on the you land. Find out. Yeah, you may you hopefully you find out. Yeah, mm -hmm. happens. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you know like think of think about the cell tower, that was a contentious issue. issue. Right. Yep. So sometimes if somebody comes before us and they have a belief and want it a certain way, they know coming in here that they're going to take it to a higher level, and we right. just have to follow that out and, you know, uh, defend what we believe to be true and then have it resolved yep. in a higher court. It doesn't happen too often, but that stands out to me as one that was particularly... I was yeah, you knew it was going before, yeah. We, we didn't have, we knew, we just yeah. knew we were never going to make peace at the table. Right. Okay. And that was okay, because there's, there's a process for that. It doesn't happen a lot. I've been on this 22 years. It doesn't happen a lot. So, um, Moving on to the, the next question. Most of the commissioners have taken some training courses which are provided by MACC um, to expand our knowledge um, and to better understand what the processes are um, behind the regulations. Are you, are you willing to participate in some of those courses? Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Eric. Yep, and you know, final question for the evening is, you know, there's this time commitment more than maybe just a meeting. You know, there are site visits, 
documents that need to be read, you know, preparation, you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be able to have that time to be able to give to the commission? You know, it, 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 it can be a commitment for sure. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, <laughs> and yes, I, I'm thinking like it could be a few hours a week and occasionally a, maybe a site visit with Matt to go someplace. If it's during the day, actually, I can make it mostly because I, uh, I work from home and I'm kind of, I'm kind of the boss of my own account. You know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm hands-on, but I don't have to do coding or things like that. I have people to do that. My job is coordination with clients. So I have meetings, maybe two, three meetings a day. So as long as we can work around my schedule, you know, I could. Yeah, a lot of times it can be a night meeting. Maybe it's a selectman's meeting that we need to go to or another board meeting we that turns. we've been asked to attend. You know, there's always town meeting, special town meeting, you know, it's right. No, but, no, no shortage of events. But I think one of the important things layered in this question is that there are regulations that in order to be able to vote on a project at the end when we're ready to yeah. issue order of conditions, um, if you have missed more than two of the public hearings for that project, you are no longer, you are unable to vote. Mm -hmm. And if we have too many. Unless somebody comes in and presents again and brings somebody okay. back up to a position where, you know, they the understand what has been missed. All the previous yeah. material. But, but so if, if we got into a situation where people started missing a lot of the meetings, it does create complications. Yeah, because um, you need to have a quorum to, of, of members who have been through it enough who haven't missed the meetings to be able to vote on the project. Yeah, and there and there is the. I mean, if you missed one, like I have, for instance, if something happens and you can't be here, mm -hmm. and that's continued. There, there is a way to watch it. Yeah, know, after the fact. Yeah. So after you watch it, you sign pages that that say that you right. have listened to that whole thing. Right. That you were part of the discussion that way, and you can do that once. Okay. So there are ways back in, and as long as you're willing to do and be flexible mm -hmm. with all of that, we have through the years. It's yeah. not overwhelming, but it's there. And I, I do have activities have young kids who have activities mm -hmm. in the evening but Wednesday is an open day for me okay right. especially at this point so. mm -hmm. Great. do you have any questions for, for us, us. Yeah. I don't know I've, I've watched a few meetings and you know I've seen how you'll work um, I think Eric's point I think was your point right there's a lot of work there's a lot of commitment you know I came in just knowing that there'll be a fair amount of that so mm -hmm. I, I look at them the members on this committee and you know usually you know not only do we is there a commitment of time but you know we've all served a fairly long period of time on the commission you know and that's to the benefit of the town that we bring that experience you know to the task at hand which is um, again you know definitely a benefit it also says we like it mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it does. So, we want to thank you very much for your time and your desire to become a commission member. Sure, thank you. Uh -huh. And thank you for serving, too. Okay. All you folks yeah. who have spent a lot of time and commitment to this. So. We'll be in touch. Sure, thank you. Do I need to leave? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can yeah. stay. Oh, you can yeah. stay. We're yeah. not, yeah. No, 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 nobody, no, nobody no, else no, scheduled no, no. this evening, so, yeah. no. So did you? I haven't. I can check my email, but I have not received anything from I Mr. Ruggieri. Because we can always just reschedule his yeah. and then deliberate after. Okay. Right. So right. it doesn't have to be tonight. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we will yeah. take that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe something really happens. You know? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we will. Matt, you'll reach out to Michael and. and yep. Reschedule. Um, can you let us know though, rather than us being limbo? quietly that you've made contact yep we'll do thank you okay um so now moving on to our 7 25 p.m agenda item it's a public hearing for dirks under massachusetts general law chapter 131 section 40 the wetlands protection act and westford's non-zoning wetlands bylaw chapter 171 the westford conservation commission will hold a public hearing on wednesday september 28th 2022 at 7:25 p.m. in meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, to 
consider the request for determination of applicability application of Jeffrey and Elizabeth Dierks for removal of three pine trees and stumps and reconstruction of an existing 12 foot by 12 foot deck within 100 feet of Nabnasset Lake and bordering land subject to flooding at 64 Lakeshore Drive South. Assessors map 73, parcel 51, lot zero. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. For the record, you are? I am Jeff Dierks. Elizabeth Dierks, also known as Buffy. Okay. There you go. Um, so, let's see. You want to remove three trees? Three dead ones, yes. Three, it said three in one place, but it talked about other numbers elsewhere, didn't it? Uh, other branches or other trimmings? Yeah, there was a widow maker that's yeah. up at the top of the slope. Yep, I remember um, reading about that. And I was out there today and again wanted to, and it's about, it's a sizable branch, about 80 feet in the air. Um, it has detached from the tree. It is just hanging in the tree. I, I, I fully recommend, um, you know, fine. That, okay. the yeah, I'm glad you that. went out and took a look at it, you know? I have no desire for Buffy to be a widow, so. <laughs> Okay. Um, Are we replanting? Blueberry bushes, replacements, that's good. Yes, there was discussion that the blueberry bushes, low and high brush, um, half dozen. So almost a two to one for the trees being removed and the uh, plantings. And there is sufficient um, uh, mature trees still in the area. Um, and with it being mostly pines, um, being underneath uh, having some low bush blueberry, having some uh, lower growing shrubs uh, certainly would diversify the vegetation in the area. Uh, but the majority of the slope is still ve heavily vegetated, um, but again, probably predominantly with mature No, as long as these aren't the only three trees and we're putting in not blueberry the, bushes, you know. Not the last three been, trees. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's not three, the three dead pine trees coming down, and, and then there's also the, the widow maker, and then there's also a couple of hemlocks. No. Didn't I read that really? somewhere in there right up to? Oh, yeah. So it's really a one-to-one. -one. Oh, okay. Also a one-to-one -one for uh, the bushes for the... No, I was just talking about what's getting cut down. There was three dead pines. Right. right? A dead and branch that's hanging above. Uh, the eight-foot-tall remnants of a fourth dead pine. Uh, that's it right there. And that's uh, shown here on the in the photo. That's the dead eight-foot stump. So when you cut that and you remove that, are you leaving the stump and just cutting the log part of it, or are you trying to pull the stump and everything out? No, we, especially for the ones that are up on the slope, we won't. Uh, we couldn't. Yeah, because we want to leave those stumps to st to Stabilize. keep it stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Stabilize. We would like to leave them all there. Yes. So, so, so <clears throat> the stump and the three trees would be cut um, fairly flush to the ground. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, with there was mention of the hemlocks. Right. Um, I don't see those indicated anywhere right, on the, exactly. the plan as to where, where those are located. It, uh, the, the text states that they're up at the top of the slope, uh, close to the house. So between the house and the lake, or oh, between oh, the house much, and the Much closer to the house than the lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find the plan. Here, here's the, so the slope is approximately in this right. area, and the hemlocks are, um, would be, I think, here. 10, 15 feet from the back of the house. So, yeah. so what, what kind of distances are we talking about to the lake? Because none, none of those um, are, are about, I mean, so the existing, so the pines that, the dead pines that are being removed, I think when I initially met with the property owners, um, the closest one I thought was about 12 feet from uh, the edge of the lake. So those are um, the jurisdiction. How, how about the? Yeah, I mean, they're probably right at kind of that, you know, 80 feet. The hemlock arm? Yeah, at the top of the slope, okay. that 80 feet. So they're clearly outside the 50. Yes. Okay. And the deck, 200 square feet, is the same size as the one that was there? I, I added up the size of the steps as well as the 12 by 12. Right. And it comes out to about 200 square feet. Yeah, the intent would be to replace it within the existing footprint. Same footprint. Okay. Yes. Right. And we understand that a, a building permit is necessary. I'm sure that the railings and the footings that are there now at this very old deck uh, don't meet circuit current code. It'll be built by a qualified contractor. I'm not a do-it-yourselfer. So uh, we'll have the, the uh, contractor pull the permit uh, for that, and we'll send that in uh, to Matt as well. So that'll be under 
a separate notice? No, so it's the same. They're replacing the existing deck. They'd be okay. existing the, replacing the existing deck and the existing footings, for lack of a better term. I think most of them are. Okay. Uh, some were kind of cemented chim cemented cinder blocks. Others were cemented uh, chimney blocks. Um, so they were. And at the back, I would be very surprised if there are actually even any footings, um, which probably is leading to the uh, deterioration deterioration of the uh, actual <coughs> deck. Can be seen viewed here. I don't know other questions. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Really hope to see it done as a neighbor. <laughs> Named for the record. Oh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> Rob Walter at 62 Lakeshore Drive South. As a neighbor of theirs, I stand in the shadow of some of those trees that are dead and would greatly appreciate to see them disappear. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank publicly VP of NIA, uh, we did need to get uh, NIA's permission to get equipment over uh, from Sandy Beach uh, during the upcoming uh, lake drawdown, which I understand is starting about now, or has just started. Uh, so uh, Rob coordinated that, uh, and we're, we're very grateful for that. And, and it's just coincidence that he's on, next on your agenda here, too. <laughs> Oh, no coincidences. <laughs> I'll, I'll say the new president and vice president are sitting right to the right of the NIA. There you go. Okay. Um, so, uh, conditional negative determination? Yes. Okay. Can I have a vote? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Conditional negative is positive. I told them that today. That was <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Just the sure things you need to tell, make sure people way. understand. Okay. <laughs> Can I have a motion to close to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So thank you very much. Um, Matt will be in touch with the, the signed paperwork. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Matt, you have something for us to sign? I do. Go away for a week and you get, you know, you forget what you're supposed to do. That's for y'all. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, moving on to our 7.30 p.m. agenda item. It's a public hearing for the Nabnesset Improvement Association. Under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's Non-Zoning Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 171, the Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, September 28, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. in Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, to consider the Notice of Intent application of the Nabnasset Lake Shores Association for maintenance of beach properties along Nabnasset Lake over the next three to six years at a parcel on Elm Road, Assessors Map 73550, Lakeshore Drive North, Map 78970, and Enmore Road, Map 7310, and 13 Wilson Lane, Map 74, Parcel 8, Lot 0. Good evening. For the record, you are? Good evening. My name is Rob Walter from 62 Lakeshore Drive South here in Westford. I sit on the Board of Directors for the Nabnasset Improvement Association. I have been a resident here in Westford and Nabnasset for 22 years, have served on the board for approximately 10 years. And I want to thank you very much for taking us up tonight. Thank you. So this maintenance plan, do you want me to elaborate? Yes, if you would please. Sure. The maintenance plan is for four properties owned by the Nabnasset Improvement Association, which serves approximately 300 members in the greater Nabnasset area. Uh, there's been much deferred maintenance uh, that's occurred since COVID began. Uh, the, we greatly appreciate your feedback. So. Are there questions in advance, or would you like me to take it beach by beach? I'm going to have you just walk right through it. Perfect. You have, well, I'm, I'm assuming what was submitted to us. So, Perfect. and each 
is laid out in detail on what you want to do. Perfect. So, you know, for sake of the audience, we might as well Super. walk it through. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so the first beach is Sandy Beach. Uh, you've got the location already uh, described. You've got a map here. Uh, the, there's about a, just under a dozen things we'd like to do, and it's removing leaves and acorns each fall, you know, by members or contractors, depending upon the amount of volunteerism we get. Certainly we are a volunteer organization, so sometimes we have more, sometimes we need to contract a few of the things out. Secondly is removing branches that overhang the boat ramp, likely by a contractor, because anything that's over three feet high, we'd rather not risk the members. So there are, uh, based on the schematic and sketch that I drafted, on the left-hand side, right by the ramp, uh, there are a few trees that may need uh, some trimming back as it's been pretty close to a couple of the people that put their boats in the lake, and I'd rather not see any of the damage done to their personal property. Right there, correct. Yep. So that's facing out uh, to the lake itself. On the left-hand side, you'll see the boat ramp uh, drive on the left. Those th three or four trees right there may need some trimming. There's also some trees that need trimming in the middle of the, uh, the beach itself, uh, some of which are dead and that uh, actually present a risk to members as they're sitting at the beach. So there's probably about half a dozen uh, dead limbs that we need to have taken out and actually one of the limbs is growing kind of closer to the beach itself so to open up the canopy a little bit we'd likely take one of those live branches down we'd like to place and remove buoys in the beginning and the end of each season as we have over the more than two decades that i've seen it done is the buoys under our authority I think that's chapter 91 and would be ultimately be the state's um, we can is it, isn't it the selectmen's call on the buoys yeah I thought it was selectmen with, with that they, it's we not us yeah, so right. it's, do the buoys, it's so not I, the I, I it's, get it's, it exactly. it's just on the list here and I'm like you know I'd love to say yes to it but I don't know if we can if you need me to strike it from it or go to somebody else that's fine uh, they've been doing it for the last forever well, we I don't think anybody's do going to have a problem but. with you do doing the buoys. It's just like I don't know if it's uh, yeah, the I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can actually that and grant you the authority. We can strike it. I'll take a look and be in contact because yeah, yeah, I have yeah. some ideas and I want to make sure before we yeah, no, no. tell them to completely remove it. But Thanks. yes, um, and, and on the branches mm -hmm. that are overhanging the boat ramp, mm -hmm. you know, I know what you're saying and it makes sense. I guess what we don't want is. You know, a tree that's fully mature on one side and then missing on the opposite side. So, you know, I hard for me to tell how, how much how, trimming needs to be done because I don't have any pictures. But, no. you know, I, I'd say. So if you see right there on the right-hand side, that's facing from the water, Eric. Yep, you, see okay. the, you see those birch trees right there? I do. There's really just only a few limbs that are growing out left. So I don't think it's going to change the... The, okay. The the structure or silhouette of those trees whatsoever, I I think they're reaching up for the sunlight that they can get. That works. Thanks. Uh, we would like to replace fencing as needed due to degradation or damage, along the beach itself. Uh, I want to say there's a section, or two that needs to be uh, replaced. I don't think we've got a good enough picture. Yeah, I'm just trying to see what we got. A lot along the left hand side uh, just left of Bruce in fact <laughs> sorry Bruce if you're watching this um, abutting the neighbor yeah it's it's not as clear but it's it's an older fence it's been there since I've been in the community and it's just it's one of those things we do need to replace is it, is it chain link or it's chain link it'll okay. be replaced with the exact same chain link okay, Margaret that's okay so it just it's it's, showing it's just age. old chain link for new chain link? It would be. I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, again, these things are not things that are going to be replaced this year. Because we're an organization of limited resources, we've got to really spread out our capital now investments. You're building a long-term plan here, right? right. I, I get, yeah, we got Appreciate it. that. Thank you. I have a question for Matt. 
uh, are we limited to a, a project of uh, three years, or is there? Is we it? can do go up to five the first year if okay. the commission determines. Um, the project is maintenance in nature and okay, so that's what this is about me. Yeah, all right, yeah. good. So, so three to six that they wrote on here. If we make it three to five, we'd be well. Good. I mean, you you actually we stay, give you know, them five. You, you make a five up front. that you know make this is valid finish. four or five. You know, we find that this okay, is. Well, we can go up to five years. Up to five. Okay. That'd be great. Be, Thanks, know, Jim. Extended as um, okay. per yeah. usual. And uh, it's it's it can be extended once for three years. I think up. Uh, a couple times for three years. Oh, okay, good. So, so, so would it be three years and extended, or would it be for five, five years? years? Five, five years, years and then a five year for, and then three extensions. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay. Good. Super. Um, number seven: Clean the storm drain in the parking lot when filled with debris or sand. As you've likely noted, if you've ever been down a sandy beach, that west to east wind blows the sand pretty hard, and so what happens is there's a storm drain and. I don't know, uh, Matt, if you want to pull up the, 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 the schematic that I, that I wrote. It, uh, if you go to the parking lot, see the storm drain in the lower right-hand corner? Yeah. Right where people park, all that wind comes off the lake, fills up that storm drain, and it's probably every other year, every third year, that we need to have that dug out properly, as you would a normal drain. Number. Is that under the purview of? Uh, well, this is a, if it's on private property. Is it private property? It is private, and it's not a public way. Not public, so okay, it's not it's like taken care of by the DPW. So, yeah, well, I think it's a hundred from the. Um, going back to the. Um, um, the property, oh, it's one hundred twenty feet, so it's probably right at the edge of. I'd say it's again, outside. Again, in, of it. I'd yeah. say it's outside and, of 100 you know, by about 12 When feet. we were discussing this, it was, all right. So maintain it. Right. Everything, you know, let's include everything yeah. that, you know, yeah. so we can. So let them maintain it. Okay. We should. Uh, number nine, add or remove signage as needed due to degradation or damage by members. Um, we've had some vandalism, but it's mostly just degradation of old, uh, you know, signs that have degraded that need replacing. Uh, number 10, we want to grade the hard pack uh, of the upper area of the boat ramp. So if you go back to the schematic, Matt, above the ramp itself is uh, a, a ramp that has hard pack before the concrete, before the, um, the granite. So it goes granite, concrete, hard pack. The hard pack is beginning to wear away on the right hand side. So we're gonna need to grade and possibly add a very small amount uh, to it to keep it level and keep the runoff from continuing the degradation. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, we, we'd like to add sand as needed to certain areas, excluding the shoreline proper by contractors and members, uh, such that it, we maintain the that which is blown off back into the street behind us. Did skip number eight. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Uh, the portable toilet that has been going down there for as long as I can recall is put down at the beginning of the season, taken out at the end of the season. Any questions about that? Um, okay. Did you also talk about removing the dead lake weeds? Is oh yes. I'm sorry. There's weeds that blow out, particularly in about July and August, mm -hmm. that they get, well, it's, it's part the growth on, in the lake itself, part where people have anchors and they're pulling their anchors up and pulling the lake weed up. As that blows, the prevailing west to east wind takes all of that up onto the beach, mm -hmm. sometime around the buoys, and so we typically will pull that off all, as long as it's dead move it aside into a pile and eventually have a contractor remove that pile after a period of time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Any other questions? Well, we need storage the contractor picks it up. If you look at the ramp right there, um, see where the B and boat ramp is? Yeah. It's just to the left of the B. Okay. And Keith is Keith so is a there or, or 
farther away from the lake. Right where the cursor is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's it's right near the lake. Uh, right. Just, okay. Right. So that's where you accumulate it till it's time to. And pick how it big up. of a pile of stuff is this? Gosh, I want to say it pro Eric, it's probably as hot at the heat of the summer. It's probably about that high, and probably as wide as that window to the end of the door. Okay. Yeah. But if it's all coming out of the lake, you know. No, I get it. I just. Now's the time to ask the questions. Yeah, now's the time <laughs> to ask. Right. It's the questions that we ask. <laughs> Good. Any other questions on Sandy? And I, I think I know we're fine with the Sandy Beach, other than you know, find out about number four. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. I think it, I have a question. I don't know if it's a question or more like um, a suggestion. Is um, a lot of the times that, I, especially in the North Beach, when I ride my bike by there, um, the gate is usually open. And, and, and even in one of the pictures here, Sandy's gate is open. Um, and that, as a mom, that kind of makes me nervous that the gates are left open. So maybe putting up a sign to ask members to please close the gates, or even if you're doing maintenance on the fencing itself, think of maybe using um, a self-closing gate so it's always going to be safe for the kids of the neighborhood so no one's wandering towards the water. That shouldn't be. Uh, no, no. Well, that's a that's a that's a really good piece of feedback. Let me see if we can get a sign or have a self closing gate, provided that it fits Thank within. You, yep, no problem. Appreciate it. Thanks, Noah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move, move on to the next. Move on on to Nobles Cove. Yep. So as Matt described on Enmore Road is uh, a, a thinner beach uh, called Nobles Cove. It faces west to east on Nabnasset, is adjacent to two properties uh, of which the neighbors have done a, a pretty good job of helping us maintain that. Uh, we'd like to do the following. There's a half a dozen things at Nobles Cove. Uh, removing leaves and acorns each fall cutting the grass as needed. Third is probably the most important aspect because it presents a, a risk uh, factor to the association and to anyone walking down them, is that they were poured with, uh, I would say, an insufficient level of uh, fill underneath for proper drainage. So as a result, as some of the dirt washed away, uh, the granite cracked, uh, created a a footfall hazard and so what we'd like to do is we'd like to properly and you could see at the top of that first step where we've done an impromptu putting a PVC board across the top one that had cracked more sufficiently and we'd like to have those broken pulled out repaired leveled and uh, either by a contractor or we often see thoughtful Boy Scouts come through here. Mm -hmm. And if that's something that you think a Boy Scout might be able to want to do, it's... It, Talk to the troops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to, before I approach them, if you feel that would be an appropriate sort of project. Hey, if the they troops can come, do it, yeah, you know, we're fine, anyway. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They come before us anyway yeah. to get permission. Yes, so. thank you. Perfect. Same footprint as the old steps? Exact same. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there is a maple on the edge of the property. Um, that we may have to trim it start beginning to grow out into uh, it's such a narrow path I think you can see that there as you're looking down towards the lake and again that's that's really just hedge trimming more than anything uh, the oak in the center as you can see just to the left of if you know Dave Amos Dave's house is on the right right there uh, there are branches that are coming a little bit closer to his house that we may need to trim in the course of the next couple of years and I just want to be neighborly that if we need to that we're able to do that yep. good and last adding sand is needed to areas excluding the proper shoreline by contractors or members as needed it's a little steeper of a slope there so we don't like to put too much sand there any 
questions on Noble's Cove? Okay. Let's look at Mary Lou Beach. Mary Lou Beach sits on Wilson Drive, and uh, there are a little more than a half a dozen things we'd like to consider. Removing leaves and acorns each fall, trimming vegetation back from the entrance and the beach area. If you look at the pictures themselves, Matt, if you'd be kind enough, on the left-hand side, there's a pretty big bush that grows out into the walkway as you're walking in towards the fence. We'd like to trim that. There's a very large um, forsythia on the right, if you look at that parked car. You, it's after full bloom in the yellow. It's probably May or Ju June or July at this picture. There's a forsythia that grows out very, very bushy, and we need to keep and make sure that that's trimmed back. We want to remo remove branches over the beach that present a hazard. There's dead, broken, broken, and low-hanging branches. If you scroll ahead, you can see some of those. That top picture there that Matt's showing has a branch that's lower than head high as people are walking through. Uh, I don't want to see anybody, anyone's eyes put out, so we certainly trim that back. Remove any trim, uh, tree limbs. Uh, Warren here is a neighbor of ours. I think you heard him speak earlier. Uh, we want to be neighborly as well to make sure that if limbs are, tra are growing out over onto his property, and actually, Matt, that's back at the beginning. It, it's a little difficult to see, uh, but Warren can likely attest uh, that next one. There's some branches on the, there's a pretty big oak tree that's come up and it grows left onto Warren's property and if we need to have contractors removing trees, we might trim a couple back there as well. But I think Warren's done a pretty good job of and likely already if trimming. If I back. remember correctly, I think he came before the commission for an RDA to prune, um, prune some, prune I think probably the same oak yeah. tree um, that was uh, approach it, it was hitting it, the house. Hitting the house. There. Storm, it was like literally hitting the, the top of the house. Are those all been trimmed back, Warren? Yeah, yeah, most of them, the guy missed one of them, but okay. you know, we, got, we, got, we got three or four. Uh, remove dead or dying tree at the corner of the property to reduce risk to members. Uh, Matt, you were actually scrolling down to that picture. There is one on the corner. If you, right there, yep. So that tree lies, and if Matt, if you cycle to the uh, schematic, Uh, the dead tree at the top right where it says dead tree right there is where that tree lies so we would uh, likely cut that off flush with the ground uh, not removing the root ball itself to maintain the the structure of the earth that's there uh, that's just one of the there's not a lot to do here at this particular beach but that's definitely one that we want to have removed So if you cut that tree out of there, were you thinking about replacing it with a tree anywhere on the property? Um, we hadn't. The dead tree right there in the right, corner? Right. Would we want him to replace it? Usually when, you know, a homeowner comes and they want to take out a tree, we have them put in a tree. Um, Is there a place to do it? I, I'm thinking if, yeah, if you, if you were able to plant something adjacent to it, You've got something whose roots are going to grow out and help to keep your shoreline more stable. You know that subsurface root network. Yeah. Would you recommend what blueberry, or would you recommend something okay. else? I can certainly. You know, we can discuss our. Okay. Uh, yeah. I guess just you know. I just want to be consistent yep. with how we approach that. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know, blue, blueberry tends to expand sideways, and maybe you yeah, want yeah. like something that's going to grow. I don't want them to out. take away the beach because his bushes are, ex you know, expanding. Sure. But you know, if we can have them planted or something that isn't going to take up much space, but okay, okay, provides yeah. benefit. Yep, I can. Uh, I can work six is a, a prior determination of applicability where we had the now that COVID's over, and we likely are going to have a little more support. Uh, there's a shed there uh, that we you had approved to move inside of the chain link fence. Uh, that's our intent to move that shed inside of that fence, uh, having a, f a gate 
itself that allows us to open up and access to uh, the, the, the shed itself. Again, that was already covered in a prior RDA. Or and that's just a shed that's going to be pulled inside the chain link fence and it's, what are you going to have in the shed? Um, it's the buoys. Okay. It's no no flammable material. Okay. Nothing of that no nature. No fuels, anything like right, that. Right. Okay. I think we had addressed that at the last okay. mm -hmm. last meeting. Yep. Um, add sand again to areas as needed, excluding the shoreline uh, by contractors and members. Any questions on Mary Lou? Good. I'm good with this, Matt. Other than just figuring out what we're going to replace the tree with. Thanks. Bush okay. Uh, North Beach. So North Beach is on Lakeshore Drive North. It faces uh, north to south facing the lake, Nebnasset Lake. It's also one of our thinner properties. Uh, we'd like to, and, and this one has, we'd like to remove the vegetation from the entrance area. There's a gate there that is apparently there to provide access to municipal access to fire police etc we have access at sandy beach for that but we do not have that access at north beach so whether the fire department or the police department want to take the zodiac down if there's an issue i think they use that to be able to access that side of the lake so we'd like to remove the vegetation from the entrance area to provide that access the pictures matt um, show the front part is pretty overgrown with some a little bit of poison it's a little bit of everything in there um, but it's manageable COVID hasn't been terrible to that part if we cut that back the fence is still intact we don't need to remove the fence there uh, there's a tree on the I think I've got a closer picture of that Matt uh, right there yep that's dead and in decay that's starting to you know, right about the power lines. I'm not sure if that's something that I call Eversource about or whether yeah. we can take that down. National Grid. National Grid. All right, mm -hmm. call National Grid. Um, yeah, but that may be the telecom lines. I don't think it, it may be Verizon. You may want to reach out to National Grid or Verizon. Okay. Two. With with the, um, the vegetation that's around the entrance area, is any of that um, invasive like bittersweet or, or multi-floor rose? So you want to know what he's going to do with, well, with when he cuts it? What are they going to do well, with the debris? Well, some of it yeah, is, is it. if it's an invasive, we we I think we'd rather have you take it out as opposed to just cut it back. So yeah. that's yeah, yeah. I would appreciate that greatly because yeah, I I'm certain that there is uh, some bittersweet. I'm certain that there's poison ivy because I literally walked in there for the measurements just today mm -hmm. to make sure we're going to talk about the retaining wall in a second. But I was tiptoeing around some the stuff that I thought I was going to get poison ivy from so okay yeah and it just you know it's one that's one of the things that if you've got the members doing it mm -hmm. what matters to us is what they do with the vegetation that they take out you know where does it go where does it go because because bittersweet you know if you don't dispose of it properly you're you're actually starting an infestation someplace else so I, I worked three years on removing it from my back <laughs> area it's okay. burn, burn it all but yeah so so <laughs> it just you know with that when you're it's yes, if it's an invasive, we'd rather have you work to get it out as opposed to just trim it. And what would be the most proper disposal you would you uh, like to see? Uh, we're still trying to get, you know, because... I mean, I can burn it in a burn pile, in a, in a burn barrel. Yes. Super easy. Yeah, if, if you open can permit. go through the, the fire department with the, the open permit. burn permit yep. in season, that's, that's your that best way. That works for us, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to remove, this is probably the larger, and again, this is l much like on um, Noble's Cove. Uh, there's a retaining wall. Uh, it's made out of timber, and there it is. It, it's, it's rotting pretty significantly where it's a, it's a footfall if anyone stands on any of those top members. So uh, we're likely going to look to either a contractor or again or the boy scouts it stands three foot one inches tall um, and it spans uh, 24 feet the entire width of well almost the entire width there's a space along the right hand side you can see 
uh, that allows anybody say they're carrying the zodiac and you got a cop on both sides they can easily walk it walk it down and over um, any questions on same, uh, same footprint for the stairs exact same Good. footprint okay yep mm -hmm. no nope, no questions from me super trim and remove vegetation in the lower area to provide access to waterfront by a contractor the front has overgrown a bit um, that we'd like to see uh, trimmed back sorry Matt I'm not yeah. sure yeah you can see on the left and the right hand side uh, there's a fair amount of weeds and invasive weeds I think bittersweets on the right um, I'm not it looks to be on the left uh, yep so we'd like to clear that out to give a, a clearer path for members to enjoy the lakefront Like to trim the trees. It's moving evasive weeds. That's justification for moving it, yep. removing it. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'd like to trim trees growing over into the neighbors' houses. If you see on the photo, well, you can all you can see right there in that photo, that one too. Uh, they're really starting to encroach uh, the neighbors, and we'd likely like to get a contract to come up and trim those back to provide both. Uh, aeration and to reduce the risk of liability it's all good the fence okay. the, the, the fence is in uh, pretty considerable disrepair so on along the uh, each side of the property so whether that's next year or in the next five years the the fencing itself due to the fact that it's been um, wrangled by bittersweet and other vines um, that's created a lot of moisture which has created uh, the deterioration on uh, the fencing so depending upon our financial capabilities we'll replace those over a staggered period of time so that's that's um, a wood versus a chain link fence at that point no they're chain link fence now uh, okay. the neighbors wood ones the Oh, okay. It actually has deteriorated and has fallen onto our chain link fence. Okay. Uh, we'd replace with similar chain link fencing. Okay. It's fine. And we'd add sand uh, as needed, excluding the shoreline by contractors and members. And that is the scope of those four properties. Mm -hmm. Great attention to detail. Appreciate your feedback. Yeah. Well, now that we've walked it through, you know, I think you've got most of our comments on that. I guess we'll find out if there are comments from the audience. Yep. So, um, are there any comments from members of the audience? Yep. Yes. Who you are, please. <clears throat> Say who you are. Warren Pearson, 15 Wilson Lane. As an abutter to uh, Mary Lou's, I fully support this application. And I have an observation about North Beach that I'll share with the public as well. Um, when you have one fence and then you put up another fence, it creates a row of volunteer brush and trees that grow between. And it's, it's pretty bad and impossible to maintain. So I think it would, be, it would be nice if we could work with a neighbor to figure out maybe a one fence solution, not a two fence with stuff growing in between it is that the one with the uh, wood fence and the chain link yes. yeah it's, yeah it's on it's the east side okay there's like there's no way to really maintain yep. that it's yep. you know and so uh um thank you mm -hmm. thanks warren that's a good point now matt is this gonna because it's a public hearing it requires an order of condition Yes, right. as it, yes, it does require an order of conditions. We also haven't received a check this afternoon. We have not received a DEP file number. I'll um, okay. rattle okay. their cage tomorrow to make sure we have one for the next public hearing. I'll draft special conditions if that's the commission's pleasure. Yeah, yeah I don't see work. why we wouldn't. That'll work. Yep. And so we need to con continue this to the 20, no, October 12th. 12th. Can I have a motion to continue the public hearing to October 12th? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So Matt will be in touch about the order of conditions and hopefully we'll, well, if you have no questions, 
on the conditions and we have a number you don't have to be here thank you thank, thank you, you very you. much okay um moving on to our 7 35 p.m agenda item um request minor modification of plan to eliminate nine foot retaining ah eight calista terrace Yes. Matt, is this the same one we got? Yes. Yes, I provided the same. Okay. We get plan. this. We have duplicate. Yeah. Yep. So, good evening for the record. You are. It's a stereoscope. You're all set. Good evening. My name is Russ Tetford. I'm with Hancock Associates representing mm -hmm. the applicants at 8 Callista Terrace. Um, so, as you know, we were here for a notice of intent application for uh, proposed patio and fireplace um, at the rear of the building. Um, our initial notice of intent called for the um, removal and reestablishment of a portion of the boulder wall. Um, after um, the contractor walked the site, he informed us that this wall is definitely intact. It's been here for 20 years and it's done its settling, so it's sound. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we, uh, instead of having a site where we might be importing um, materials to plant now. We've decided to cut the site and increase the height of the smaller retaining wall um, beside the elevated deck there. Um, yes, right where Matt's yeah, pointing the, to. Oh, if you use the orange button, you can. Yeah, so in this area, this was in initially a two foot retaining wall. It's now going to be a four foot retaining wall. Um, and in addition, we're uh, the grading ends up working out where it's the same pitch that works around. We're actually kind of maintaining what is the existing grade out there. So this 84.5 grade corresponds to the 84 point. It's around 84.5 right at this intersection of the wall. Um, so it, and um, additionally, when the contractor was out there, he had made note at, um, and commission members know that walk the site that this area here is very steeply sloped um, and it's going to need some sort of uh, slope um, stabilization techniques and treatments um, in order to comfortably go in here and construct this portion of the project here. This is going to be a retaining wall that wraps around and then eventually heats in with the rest of it. Um, so what were you going to do for slope stabilization? Uh, we had talked last time about um, it was going to be loam seed seed mix and on top of that it would be a st um, straw mat secured okay. with uh, some sort of wood staking um, typically like a hub or a six inch uh, regular stake um, and in addition to that we have revised the limit of work and the erosion control so right now um, it you know basically starts at where we're proposing some tree clearing comes in, encapsulates this area that's intended to be used uh, by the contract to construct the wall. And then it's gonna cut up, climb to the top of the boulder retaining wall and stand there. Um, and one of the, the reasons for that, it's just better maintenance for and better upkeep for the silt fence and straw wattle. Uh, he no longer has to go down to the bottom of this wall in order to clean as necessary. Um, and it just continues down and basically meets up to where we were originally proposing it on this sideline here. Um, and uh, that is it. Um, we're here for any sort of feedback and if the commission would be um, accepting of this change. Um, so with, now, has the contractors with the, um, building of the main portion of the, the patio is the equipment still going to come in around the end, edge of the garage ah uh, yes it it definitely has to um the other option of going on the northeast side is it's not um i don't think it's possible to bring any sort of machine i think and the well is located there which okay. certainly would prohibit yeah, that the slope on that side of the house is very steep 
um, hence why we're proposing slope stabilization. Well, and I'm, you know, is I'm looking at how, you know, that even behind the garage, it's it's looks like it's a fairly steep slope. Um, it's not clear to me from the plan how far the um, the erosion control extends along the property line. It actually comes up, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's this, this double double hatched yes. line. Okay, um, so I was I, I thought it ended here as well, mm -hmm. and then realized that the line okay, so continues it, all the way up uh, above the uh, above up to the uh, above the septic system. Okay, and the septic the, tanks, I guess. The plan also identifies proposed soil stockpiling areas. Um, kind of alongside the, the driveway. Okay, yeah. so so the contractor has thought through that level of detail. Yes, he's uh, actually here tonight. Uh, the sack. If you have any questions for him, he'd be happy to answer them also. Um. No, my only, you know, it not just if you go north, yeah, go to the top. Um, so you've got that s steep sloping area. What is that, at a, at a two to one maybe? Two to one, three to one? Yeah. And, but it sounds like, okay, you're gonna have some equipment in there too. Um, are you using any machinery in there to do any of the work? Small excavator. Okay. A very small excavator. Just to dig the footing of the actual wall that comes off the corner of the house. Yeah. And comes around to the straight section of wall by the stairs. So how do you get that machine in and out of there? Yeah, go all the way around? Come around here. Okay. Go there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be all constructed and done. The retaining wall is actually going to be going in first okay. before any of the other construction goes in because we need to drop the the grade after the deck to get on a level playing field with everything without disturbing the uh, boulder riprap wall. And that the height of that retaining wall, I think you said it's it's less than four feet. Yes. Okay. Um, what's the the black stuff up? The black. Yeah, that. It's got, to, it's got to be some screen of some sort. Yeah. I don't. That was on the landscape plan. I got traced over. They had kind of it was labeled as a footpath on there. Um, yeah. yeah. An artifact. Yeah, I don't. The wellhead's right there. Yeah, the well's right yeah. in the same area. You know, the wellhead's right here. For that. Um, to me, I don't know what that was. I mean that may have been you know i can certainly compare that with the landscape plan or the landscaping plan which was provided um uh, that was provided a couple weeks ago has all native species on it so um i can certainly okay yeah i'm just clarify that i mean when, when something becomes is the plan a record i kind of like to know what the things yeah. are i want to say on the landscape plan it was labeled as a uh, footpath okay. uh like okay. yeah it wasn't really brought in wasn't brought to my attention to call it out um, something that they put on there that it, it tended to flip off that layer in the drawing and it just remained okay this seems better than the old plan um, any other member questions from members of the Commission um, member questions from members of the audience um, so well, Matt, one what? question. Okay. Uh, how is the building permit a law a rule written about it, the height of the wall needing a if it's over four feet over from four feet? four feet from the base of the wall to the top. Okay. It, uh, so if this wall is four point seven, right. um, that will require a building permit. Mm -hmm. But I mean there's also so, a four point five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. so, so I mean so it's so it's great. They're they're less than the nine foot that we'd seen originally, but they you still need to get the town engineer check. Yeah, right. yeah okay. I think even we could revise in that area um, just to keep it under four feet. You can do that. If it needs to be it. bigger than five, then yes, but this was just kind of my original run at uh, okay. what the wall elevations were going to be. I believe the plan from the designer, the wall was roughly 30 inches. Oh, okay. So Even I, I, think, I think we're more mm -hmm. than okay. more than good. Mm -hmm. So Matt, what's, you know, I mean, for us, when we've approved a project, it's really helpful for us to have a final plan of record so we know. So we can, I would recommend the commission approve 
the minor modification to the plan because um, this is does have a revised date over um, of yesterday, so 927, um, and we can it'll be included in the file um, as the um, you know as the approved modification. Of well, the plan. I was just gonna say is this is showing retaining wall heights of 4.7 and four. You know, is if you're saying that the wall designer has now got the walls to something lower. I'd almost like to see a plan that reflects what we're going to see when we see the as built. And I can revise the plan again just to update. Zach can send me his uh, wall cut sheets, and I can update accordingly. Okay, yeah, because I think that way, you know, we're 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 you're having the right plan of record. Yes, and and that all conversations going forward will be based on the right information. Okay. Um. So, is there any special wording for the motion? Uh, approve the minor modification the um, as discussed tonight um, subject to receipt of a yeah subject okay. to receipt of a, a plan uh, an updated yeah, site updated file. plan with plan or records below four. so moved second all those in favor Eric yes Marilyn yes Jim yes Noel yes Anne yes and Margaret yes so okay thank, thank you very thank much you. thank you Okay. So is there anything we need to sign? No. Okay. Um, moving on to our 7.40 p.m. agenda item. It's a continuation of a public hearing for Roots and Shoots LLC, 45 Village View Road. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for the record, you are? Bruce Ringwall from GPR representing Roots and Shoots. And this is? I'm Singh Kwok, uh, the owner of the uh, property at 45 Village. You. Evening. Evening. Okay. Okay. Based on our uh, last meeting, <coughs> we've uh, revised this plan to uh, return, to remove the wall and return the um, backyard to um, its original condition uh, to the best of our knowledge and abilities. Um, I did not put any proposed contours on the plan um, I tried I used uh, the lidar that's on your GIS um, but in discussions in my office we didn't want to um, be putting a stamp on that because we never did a topo of what was there before because we were brought in after the fact um, what we do have is and it's really hard to see on here Matt if you could zoom in a little bit more on the yeah the yeah, kind of in this yeah, right just here my borrow this excuse yeah. me <laughs> yeah it's, it, it does come through on the the plan so hard comes through fine yeah. yeah yeah so right right here is a series of the boulders that and I've got them shown as best we know because I have photos of when the wall was under construction and the the boulders are right behind the wall um, <clears throat> so our goal is to uh, remove the wall, excavate out to the boulders to expose the boulders again, um, maintain the same slope that we have right now on the down gradient side, so it'll come right up to those boulders as it did before. And then on the up gradient side, uh, in the area that's bubbled, uh, oh yes, I'm sorry, I've got in here, the, uh, the drain that was in here, the roof drain, we wanna extend that over to the far as we're looking at it right side of the of the site um, outside clearly outside the 30 foot um, no disturb zone and uh, put in a small recharge you know two by two outlet so that the, the roof drains don't create erosion over the yard and they have a spot to get recharged back in and then they have a level spreader also Matt if you could just lower the image down just a little bit so we can see the end of the driveway perfect thank you as I had proposed before, we wish to have the contractor install a uh, infiltration trench um, uh, at the end of the driveway. A lot of village uh, view road comes down and drains down this driveway and right towards the back. And it's been an issue in the past for erosion and this will allow for the water to recharge 
in this area um, during low flow rain events and then in heavy flow rain events it would be able to have this as a level spreader so it comes in and then it won't be a, a race off the asphalt across the the lawn and create erosion but it'll be into the ground and then as that area fills up it'll be a level spreader over the end makes sense <clears throat> the issue of safety still exists and what we'd like to do is at the top in the front of the boulders is install a fence um, whether it's a, a split rail with a wire behind it or some other mechanism um, but they have small children and they don't want them rolling whoops I hit the wrong button oh, no. let's see here what do I do I exit there you go uh, they don't they have small children and they don't want to have an instance where they roll down over the boulders um, this is not a fence that would tie into anything. It would just be a protective in front of the boulders. So it wouldn't impact wildlife movement. It wouldn't impact anything else. You can go around the edges where it's a gradual grade, as in on the left here and over on the right, it's a gradual grade in those locations, but just to prevent them from rolling off the edge. Now, <coughs> the where I don't have the existing grades, I do have photos, we're going to do our level best to return everything to a natural grade. What our thought is, is, is that have the contractor come in, remove the wall, obviously from the upgradient side, we have to take it out with an excavator and bodies by hand, and then expose the existing boulders that were there um, by the original contractors when they put the original subdivision in in the early 80s and then um, grade back up and, and you know from that wall back up from this section of stone and boulders that is visible as we're looking at it on the left hand side over here there's about a two two and a half foot grade change from the surface grade here, not from the top of the wall, but from the surface grade to those stones. If that exists all the way across here, then this will be right back to, this, this, these stones should be just under the surface of the grade, and which I assume that they are because the wall stops right in that general area. And this is a 250 contour right here, 255 contour right here. And this is the 255 contour right here off the edge. So by the LIDAR, this contour seems to come right across this area in this general motion. But, you know, that's LIDAR and it's taken an aerial topography and it's creating an image that I can't put trust in. So what I would like to suggest and discuss with the commission is that we grade down to this wall and if in this area it is too steep to grade down to the wall across the yard that we'd be able to set a few boulders outside the 30-foot line just right in this area um, natural boulders like they used in the area already so that there is not such a steep grade down here. I don't know if that those boulders in that area are a foot below the surface or if they're three or four feet below the surface. I just don't know. I was never there. Hey, Jim. After you've uh, opened up these, uh, these boulders and taken away the excess fill that had been behind uh, the, this wall that's being removed, yep. um, the fence you're putting in is well inside the 30-foot no disturb buffer. That's correct. You were talking about that as being the area that you want to uh, protect the children from getting over because it'll be sloped downward from here, right? Well, no, it's because the boulders are going to have, they, before they built this, there was about a four, what was it, six foot? You said the height of them. It was an eight foot wall in parts. Those walls, the, 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 the boulders are about an eight foot wall in parts, a six to eight foot. It said it was taller than them. Yeah, it was, it was very steep. And so we, we're trying to prevent that from being the well, fall issue. If, if this fence followed the 30-foot uh, no-disturb um, 
boundary. Yep. That would also prevent uh, if you used it. It would, but it was it was lawn right up to those boulders. I've I've given you folks aerial photos of that. Um, right, but you're in the in the 30 foot no disturbed area there, right? That is correct. And that, that's closer than we see do. with the fencing. Yeah, we wouldn't let them do that. Right. We. Right. You know, we might let them grade it, but other than that, we'd you, probably you had, tell them to put boulder or something. measured in here from the wetland to the, uh, the wall that was um, placed you know, way too close. Correct. This is still too close. This is the line we're so So the, the, the issue here is, is that the backyard, when they bought the property, mm -hmm. was lawn right to those boulders. We want to return it to that lawn to those boulders. We want to prevent someone from falling off of it, young children from falling over the six foot drop of those boulders to the grade down below that. Yep. Right now it's an eight foot drop. Right, we'll and say. if this fence was here, it would prevent the children from falling. Yes, but it would also take away um, a section of the lawn that the, they had previously. Of, of the buffer zone. It would take away a section of the lawn that was previously so there. Was there a fence in, there previously? There was not, no. Okay, so I, I, I hear what you're saying about so we're having that lawn, but what we're saying is we typically wouldn't be putting a fence inside of the 30. So while you want to be accommodated and have the lawn, you know, what do we do about the fence that's inside of the 30 that wasn't there before? Right. So why would fence posts and then fence up in the air have an impact on anything that's there that wasn't there before? That's what I guess I'm having a hard time with. I 100% understand the reasonings for the buffer zones and the no disturb zones I totally understand that but when it was a lawn and part of the yard why are we penalizing the homeowner we're not we're, we're, we're allowing him to to have the lawn but we probably wouldn't be allowing him to put the, the fence that close to the resource area because what would it do Typically, we don't allow any structures Anything, or posts within inside the 30. Yeah, any construction within the 30 foot. We've had people move uh, sheds that have been inside the 30 foot by a couple of feet. I 100% understand that. And I 100% understand. You know, it's people maintaining the fence and all of that. And, you well, know. Mowing the lawn and all that. So if they don't put the fence there and they have a lawn there and they're mowing the lawn. I mean, what difference is uh, mowing is, First is of all, a permitted use I thought, use I thought that this was so system. steep that people were, were worried about, you know, people hurting themselves, so it didn't seem like it was something that was heavily maintained. I don't know. I can't yeah. tell you what, you know, it was full. Matt, can you, you know, up, you had built it up. Can you bring up the aerial photos that were originally submitted or? Yeah, I can like find. The, like the 2019 on the town website? The yeah. G, on the GIS? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, it shows I'm working on it. Actually, I'll go to Mass Mapper, Mass Mapper. The best I could see was like yeah. a band of trees down low, but it, it doesn't have measurements. Yeah, and, and you had mentioned that in one of the early meetings, and one of those trees was actually on the neighbor's yard that fell over and, and hit their vehicle um, in a storm shortly after they moved in. I mean, so if you go in the, in the aerials and you look at them, there were no, no trees to speak of in this backyard that, that weren't, you know, coming down I think they said there was one or two trees that was right at the, where the wall was but it was below the stones I also like to say that we wouldn't typically allow any sort of maintenance as far as like a, a lawn within the 30 foot at all um, so I agree with I agree with Jim I, th I think that the fence would be a good idea as far as safety for the children but I'd like to see it follow the 30 foot buffer and have all of that lawn area beyond the fence just be naturalized. Why are you so small? Those images from 2019. Um, oh, there, we that was there we go. So you can see the the deciduous stems that are sticking up there a substantial distance back which is basically right where those boulders were if you look at um, Google Earth images or um, above, you know, if you even go backwards Matt I don't know how late you go back stems from the problem that we don't have a, an existing conditions plan 
hundred percent. Hundred percent in agreement. It's not your issue. hundred percent in agreement. It's your client's issue. Hundred percent in agreement. So this doesn't show us where the, the trees are located. It doesn't. You can't measure the distance from the trees to the wetlands to the house to anything. Any markers. There's no no boundaries. No no measurements you can you can take. Hundred percent in agreement. And the wetland line is just outside that property line, which you can see in the both of the neighbors' yards are, um, you know, lawn right up to the edges of it as well. So what's the solution? And there was fill brought in, but we don't know how much. We don't know exactly when. Um, I, I gave that you know, to you at a previous the, meeting. I, I can look it back up again. It was a, um, within but, a, a period of like in a month time frame or something, right? Yeah. And it, April. It, 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 for the area that was disturbed, it was like three quarters of a foot, but obviously it was mostly right along the, the wall because it was covering and filling the space between the, the existing stone wall and the proposed, uh, the constructed wall that they put in. You know, I have an issue with the fence. I would prefer them to, yeah, to add to the bowl i mean if they want to have the the lawn go to that boulder retaining wall then then have them place some boulder on top of that to to give them two or so feet more height from the edge of that lawn to the existing boulder field just add them add more boulder to but, it but then we still got the issue of the fence um basically at the top of that boulder wall well no i'm saying get rid of the yeah. fence and just elevate you know, oh, you're, vertically you're elevate about, the boulder oh, wall so basically what you're saying is kind of build a stone wall on top of the boulder wall and then that's and that wall. becomes your fence instead of, uh, instead of a, a wood fence i mean what i mean as i mean just again uh, as an idea because then it's just I mean, a boulder if, wall if we if they were able to construct a boulder wall you know between 30 and 35 <laughs> You know so outside the 30 you know so or at the 30 no i'm line. saying even right now he's got a boulder wall here mm -hmm. but he wants to put his fence right there too and i get yep. that and we don't want the fence there so i'm telling him just to elevate that boulder wall and up and allow that him to increase the height of the height boulder of wall without increasing the height of the lawn behind it right so that becomes the fence that the boulder wall becomes the barrier hmm. And, but then there's still the issue of the maintaining within the 30. That's foot. okay because if he had it, then I don't want to take it away from him. That's existing maintained, previously existing maintained lawn within the 30 because right. of the age okay. of the subdivision. Okay. I would, I appreciate that offer. Um, I'd like to. Yeah, no, think I'd about like to, it. Like to, no, no, I'd like to have them have a chance. And I think once we open it up and expose it, I'm a little concerned because. It's all I, unknown to you right now. Well, I get it. Yeah, no yeah, worse yeah. than that. I, I know what I did as a kid. And you know, Boulder is something <laughs> for me to climb on, you know, and so I think it makes yeah. it a worse yeah, condition. But, but as kids, <laughs> fence don't stop a kid either. If you get a split rail, he's just going over it, under it, you know. Yeah, the ball goes over it. Yeah, the that's, that's not, you know. It's, so, I, so I hear you. So, uh, yeah, so yeah. how about this if we... Um, think about it. Yeah, if, well, Matt, if we could go back to the... Uh, just, I found... Uh, aerial imagery from 2014 yeah um and you can see i mean there does appear to be a fairly distinct um line uh line behind the house um yeah. with the uh, uh, uh the, from the lawn probably the boulder, probably line the boulder wall the boulder so line, it, yeah. it, that certainly does um is consistent mm -hmm. and it looks like it's right about the same area space between the house and the property line so um how about this as a as an option we, we 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 give that option and we also have the option of taking the fence and keeping outside the 30 foot line um so that i want to bring this thing to a close and i get an order of conditions from you guys so that they can do this this fall before you we shut down things so we can get it planted and uh get some erosion control out there so that we don't have disturbance it's all yeah but if you want to put in fence you got to follow the 30. right i understand yeah so, and then just, you, you, if you've so got then long, you have two options. You got the fence at thirty, right. or you might be able to increase the height of the boulder wall to have it be the you know that retaining, you know, feature you want instead of the fence. And and I'll take one more step of maybe putting boulders at that thirty foot line. Yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't have a that. problem with you doing that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you can 
incorporate that Matt into the, yeah, the well, order that would I'll be... have a grand old time <laughs> <laughs> how do you incorporate that all it'll at like, once it'll be like a choose your own adventure you know <laughs> if this there'll be a lot of ifs you know it's uh, like SQL if this then this if this then this you know we'll... the commission will have the opportunity to review it so I, well, I'm excited yeah. for you too um, okay. Yeah, it's uh, I, believe me. If if I had an existing conditions, I'd, I'd be. And I went back and I looked at the septic plans and tried to pull other things. Everything was for the front yard. There was nothing for the back. And and Matt and the rest of your staff tried to find help me find stuff on the old subdivision plans. If there was an actual NOI filing for it, we couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it wasn't like we didn't give it the college try. Um, but you know, just was it there? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, sure. I, I, I really appreciate everyone's time tonight. I know it's, it's getting a little bit late, and you know. Um, we still got plenty to, more after this. So. Uh, well, your willingness <laughs> to work with us is, is really appreciated. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate the the the, um, the thoughtfulness about you know the potential options, right? I just wanted to better understand that the option about putting additional boulders, which is a natural stone, it's you know um, on top of the existing boulders, right? Yep. Um, to kind of serve as a potential, kind of like a natural retaining wall. It, well, no, it's like to natural, make a natural wall. A natural yeah. wall. Okay. A natural so wall. that instead of having a fence there, you could have a natural wall there, so okay. that they, they, they hopefully keep your kids from falling over. Well, and actually, you could you could. Act potentially you know planting something in front of the wall so that the kids are not getting to the wall and climbing over so for example if there were bushes or or something like that where the wall is higher it might be a deterrent like, it might be a deterrent like, like rose bushes with thorns like, <laughs> <laughs> what, did yeah. what did you say rose bushes with thorns <laughs> no, no you don't want to do that to the that kid doesn't work oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you sure is there a limitation on from the commission um, in in terms of what how much height we can add to that we can, uh, to the existing the boulder, boulder wall that's good I don't know how high that boulder wall is right now. No, but it, but in terms of we get to grade, how much higher can they make the the boulder wall to be the basically what we're doing is building. No, a stone I know, wall. but when I look around boulder walls in town, usually they, you know they're about yay big and they've you yeah. know and it's Appreciate just if you if if you look at the one to the right of the screen there where it says boulder wall, that is probably eight to ten feet high. Wow, if not higher. And wow. it's holding the driveway up, and that is literally that edge is the edge of the driveway. So it's it's holding the neighbor's driveway up. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Our okay. neighbor's uh, boulder retaining wall is very high. It's probably up to where that. that wow. Yes. Yeah. At, at least. It, yeah, I don't know what the limits are of of, of putting just a freestanding border wall. Yeah, but, around four feet. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking four. if we yeah, keep it four. under four feet, under we four. don't need to get some sort of engineer yeah. stamp yeah. on it. Yeah, right. four that's feet. Uh, four feet ish. So, so basically, addition will limit it to additional four feet on top of the existing boulder to, yes. to also. Uh, you, yeah, you don't want to be more than four feet above grade. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if this is grade, you don't you don't want to be more than four feet above grade. Okay, so can can I guess I'm just also thinking out loud about how how slope it was before. So if we add additional, so four feet above the grade, right? But can we raise the grade so that it's less sloped? Because no, because then you're filling in. Because then you're filling in again. Well, and, and, and outside the thirty, that's okay. Yeah, and anyway. outside the thirty, we might let them do it. Yeah, but inside the thirty. Okay. No. Uh, But yeah, um, I, I'm I'm just asking so that I understand. You know, no, I no no no. Good, uh, always good to ask. Ask away. Always. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm. So have we given the, you enough leeway, compromises, I, I, places I, where I, you I, can I, make? I'm I'm taking the I notes and Matt and I will. The questions <laughs> are being asked. I think I'm we're just, good. So my only remaining question is: is at this point you have the plan? We have talked about a couple different options to how to address this yep. area as we uncover it. I think you just need to have a, an order drafted and then you can close this. 
Do you need our presence for that closing in that order? Not if you agree to everything we write. You might want to oh, give us a little yeah, more direction right. between now and then on yeah. what, where you might be going with this. Yeah, right. Other than that, you know, I'm thinking we're good. We're, yeah. we're going we're going as we've discussed. So, so which one? <laughs> well, but so which we'll be back the storm. Yeah. in two weeks. This would be continued to the October twelfth meeting. That's when we would issue the order of conditions. But I think it would be helpful if you were back here so that we have the chance okay. to review what's the final plan and and make sure that there's no misunderstanding between the two parties and, and any questions we might have, you're here to answer them. But I'm not making any changes to the plan. Uh, yes, you are. Well, that's, that's fence. Oh, fence. I'm moving the fence outside, outside the That's correct. Yeah, we, we that's want right. the plan to to match what the asphalt's going to look like. Right? Well, yeah, but I, I can't because I don't he know doesn't what know what that's going to be until he gets into it. Exactly. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying is is because you don't know what you're going to get down. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So Matt understands, I think, and he's got it. I'll I'll, I'll move the fence I'll out. Listen to the meeting again. We'll. we'll yeah, we'll, but we'll I, th I think some and of I this is. Too, Matt. So we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know some of this is as you're you're talking to your client, you're reviewing the options, you come yeah. up with the stuff. Yeah. I'll label the I'll label the two things that we've the, yeah. the couple things that we've talked about on the plan, and I'll I'm sure he'll right chat with Matt that, about it. If they need to be here, they need. If they don't, yeah. we're good. It might be safer. Well, well I'll, I'll try my best to be this one. I'll try my best to be as clear as possible on this. <laughs> on the, on the <laughs> I, think, I think I think you could do better if you could be here. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to be here. So that way, there's no misunderstanding. You know, before we seal the end. Yeah. So let's continue this. Can motion to continue the public hearing to October 12th. So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann, uh, Noel? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So. Okay. Okay. And, and you'll have that order that yes. evening. So yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I just, I know that we'll the, close the public hearing. That puts us at yeah. the end of the but time frame. But you also have seen it before the meeting. What's that? It's not, you oh, know, yeah, no, no, I know that. I know okay, that. Yeah, okay, yeah. just so you understand that. Oh, no, I totally. You would have had a chance to. Yeah, you totally got that. Okay, okay. We appreciate okay. your time. Thank okay. you for helping Thank us you. out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, can you, moving on to our 7.45 p.m. agenda item, continuation of public hearing, initial order of conditions for Maury Brothers General Contractors, 164 Main Street. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, you are... Pat Watering with Landtech Consultants, and here with me is Jeff Mori with Mori Brothers General yeah. Contractors. Um, here for the continued public hearing for 164 Main Street. I have a couple of plans. They just those are not I have other plans for you. Oh, thanks. Um, we're here for the continued notice of intent yes, application for the reconstruction or the redevelopment of 164 Main Street, which is the former Reed Farm built in 1746. Um, last time we saw you was back in August, the beginning of August 10th. Um, since then, we've gone in front of planning board. We've closed the public hearing. They've issued a decision. Um, we had some comments from the commission that we kind of wrapped into one final plan set. Um, that was being passed around to not only the Conservation Commission, um, but to the Planning Board. Uh, but most of the comments were actually from the Conservation Commission. Um, engineering Department did review it. They didn't have any comments on the stormwater. Um, the revised plans that you have in your packets. Um, we did go out and find the pool. The surveyors went and located it. Uh, it was not easy to see or find. It's um, an older pool it shows up on the GIS it shows up on the on the on the online but it, in reality it's uh, filled with like it looks like they cut down a big tree and filled the pool with a tree nice <laughs> it was really hard to find the, the only thing is is like a little square of the the coping, coping that, that yeah. you can see and so the surveyors went out there they located the pool there is a shed that's associated with it that kind of sits on or in the wetlands um, and so what we did was we updated the plans to include a restoration, additional restoration of that area to remove the pool. Um, the erosion control goes out and around that area. Um, we did include a construction sequence to re remove the pool and fill it and naturalize it and then allow it to, to, to be natural. Um, so I think it's all good things. Um, 
There's also some punch listings I'll go through to delineate and show access to the sports court, um, which we show outside the 100 foot buffer. Um, there was one planning board item to show the walkways out in front of the units um, and how they are going to access the parking areas from and to the buildings. Um, we did move the parking spaces out in the front to be 55 feet away from the wetlands on the right hand side. I know Jim had asked for that, um, so we were able to do that correct. And we shifted those to the left about five feet or so. Um, there was some comments about the operation of maintenance manual. Um, we can include that in the HOA documents um, and it is a condition of approval for the site plan that it is incorporated into the HOA documents and actually recorded. Um, I don't have a copy of their decision, but it, it, I did look it up and it is one of the conditions of approval that the O&M for the drainage system be incorporated and um, recorded at the registry of deeds. Um, the Historic Commission did issue final comments as part of the site plan review. Um, the architect that we're working with, um, MZO, MZO Group, MZO Jim, Group Zegowitz. Jim Zegowitz, is able to meet um, and work with all, the, all of their concerns. Um, and that's about it. We do have a draft order conditions. We didn't have any comments, but we'll be happy to answer any comments you might have. There was, in response to your question, I did speak with Attorney Robbins um, regarding Special Condition 41, um, and she recommended that the language be amended to, um, so that it read, in order to assure all property owners, all owners of the property shall have been informed of the restrictions on the property as required by the bylaw. Um, a notice of these requirements shall be included in the condo documents um, because it is ultimately going to be set up as multiple condo uh, condo uh, structure. So at that point, it is codified, and um, so it would it, at that point it lives in perpetuity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If the commission is acceptable to that amendment. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Um, any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, can I have a motion to issue the amended order of conditions for this property? So moved. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. A uh, Noel? Yes. And? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Um, so can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel, yes, and yes, and Margaret, yes. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and get thing stuff for you to sign. To sign. Okay. Um, and then continuing on to our 7:50 p.m. agenda item. Um, 7 Junebury Lane Enforcement Order Restoration Plan. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Matt Waterman with Lantec uh, Consultants. Here with me tonight is the current homeowner, uh, Krishna Upalapati. Upalapati. Sorry if I butchered that. I didn't mean to. But uh, uh, we've been working with Krishna, and I think we continued the last hearing. Uh, we were in front of you back in the beginning of August. Um, we continued at the last meeting. We were working with Krishna to kind of develop a plan and I don't know if Matt can pull it up. I can go through the specifics. But we did tweak the court a little bit from the last time we saw it. Um, before, um, there's kind of two sides of the, the, the turnaround of the basketball court, the sports court. We added the key and the current basketball to the, to the, to the plan, for, kind of for context. Um, and so what we did was, before we had about 25 feet on the southern side of pavement, to be removed and 20 feet on the northern side and we shifted that over and and put a little chamfer or, or we angled it in that northwest corner um, so now that we'd be removing 15 feet and um, 10 feet on the northern side um, so we're reducing it by the amount of impervious air that we were going to remove we're less 365 square feet um, the goal was to just try and provide enough area for that basketball key court 
um, to exist. Um, it might have to get shifted closer to the house, um, but we do maintain the 35 foot buffer with the, <coughs> with the conservation posts that go out and around that little area. Um, previously, there was a little triangle that kind of extended into that area, but obviously it's a little more. Um, we also, to, to, mm -hmm. to help mitigate, we added or we increased the amount of restoration behind the house of, of lawn area to be removed and restored to to a woodland um, and that's going straight across the bottom I have my handy dandy pointer um, so right here so we added uh, an additional 681 square feet of lawn area to, to compensate the, the, the loss or the, the reduction of 365 square feet so we, we were my goal was to try and you know at least do two to one or, or mitigate um, that for that area and but provide a, a nice larger um, the 100 foot buffer comes down I don't know if you recall there's a wetland on each side and then it, it kind of crows foot there and then it goes back up this way so the 100 foot buffer kind of bisects the house and then the 50 foot buffer comes along and then it does the same thing on this side and then the wetlands are on kind of e either side of, of the of the property so we were hoping we were I know we've been working with um, both the previous um, ho um, homeowner and now Krishna to try and f kind of find a resolution for the, the sports court we were hoping to get some feedback from the Commission um, Krishna's here Bob is here also and we'd be happy to answer any questions it's 35 feet to the wetland is that what it is correct oh, good um, Matt, I'm just looking at <clears throat> following the um, <coughs> wood conservation posts. Yep. It looks like the way they're set up, the existing gra gravel landscape bed looks like it's outside where it's in the area. Um, this one here? Yeah. Is it, it just kind of normally when we follow the conservation posts, we don't expect to see maintained. Well, no, the existing gravel landscape bed was proposed to be removed. Yes, correctly. definitely. Okay. Everything in this gray, greenish, olive color okay. is to be restored, yep. removed, okay. it naturalized. Just, okay, it, I didn't, I didn't see existing gravel landscape bed to be being removed. removed, which was what confused me. Yeah, we can clarify that. Um, okay. That. It was a busy plan, and I, I, I think I was just. Yeah. Hey, that's all you need to say. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I was trying to keep it clean and readable. Yeah. Yeah. The shaded area is to be restored to a natural state. And the shaded okay. Area yeah. Both the hat, cross hatch, and okay. the, all of these. That's good. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah, trying it, to define that paved it, area. Yeah, it just. And highlight it. it. Yeah, where, where the existing gravel landscape bed. Yeah, you're right, Jim. And, and I guess for clarity, I'd like the existing gravel bed just to note that it's being removed so that down the road yep. there's no chance for misunderstanding. And there's two of them actually. There's another yeah, one, there's one as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This one doesn't count. Yeah, that one, that one, <laughs> that stays. one stays. That one stays. Okay. That's, is that a fire pit? What is that? A gravel pad. It's a, that's yeah. good. <laughs> it's, a, okay. it's, part of the, it's kind of the formal landscaping. That stays. Okay. Um, but the other ones are no issues. Okay. So um, I mean, he wants this little court right here, and we're. It works. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, any other <coughs> questions or comments from members of the commission? No. Any, Jim, you good with this? Yeah. I am. No. Okay. Any comments or questions from the audience? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Matt. Yes. Oh, I'm here, but sorry. sorry. <laughs> I had my head down. Matt Salem. So, okay. So, um, then we basically just a vote to approve the restoration plan, um, pending receipt upon the existing uh, landscaped items within the shaded area to be removed. And okay. So, so an updated plan, yep. just with word but. words clarified. Okay. Can I have a motion to that effect? Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Is there a timeline on completion of this work? I'll have to look at the enforcement order because I'm sure we. I don't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't either. Probably uh, says a certain number of days after a restoration plan is received. Uh, approved, or right, like yeah, I, I'll, I'll confirm and we can I, I don't certainly remember. work with the homeowner and to get mm -hmm. it done in a timely manner, but not be unduly burdensome. Okay. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Uh, kind of. Okay. okay. Kind of works. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to our 7.55 p.m. agenda item, um, the 25 Buckboard Enforcement Order update. Um, Mr. Waterman uh, inquired to the property owner regarding if the uh, update on the construction schedule and as of last Wednesday, the fence um, had not been moved and then the excavation will begin. There was she doesn't currently have dates. We will follow up. We will make sure this gets done. I'm very okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, then moving on to our 8 p.m. agenda item, continued public hearing for Franklin 31 Bridge Street. Chris is not here. Um, and I would like the commission's uh, direction to provide to require Mr. Franklin uh, provide an update, um, you know, have a signed uh, contract with a wetland scientist to get the things uh, done by the first November meeting, if, not, if or send an email to him on the commission's behalf stating that. And at that point, if no information has been provided, um, I would respectfully request the commission consider denying the notice of intent um, at which point we would revert back to the enforcement order and potentially seek fines but um, as it has been almost three years and oh, it has been. Um, I, agree. I agree if that's if the commission I is think we've been fair. It, so continue the public he hearing uh, to November whatever yeah I want to first and, and you will uh, advise no. him you will advise him of the process yes so he'll know what will happen if he does not, if, if there is not he a complaint. He won't be hearing it piecemeal, he'll hear it at once. Yep. Um, the first meeting in November is November 9th. Oh my God. Okay. It's almost Thanksgiving. Okay. So can I have a motion to continue so move. the public hearing till November 9th? Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. And moving on to our 8.05 p.m. agenda item. Um, emergency certificate, ratify an emergency. Oh, there's 54 Lakeshore Drive North, an emergency certificate to remove fire damaged trees. Good evening. Good evening. Your name for the record Brian is? O Brian O'Neill. Brian O'Neill. Homeowner from 54 Lakeshore Drive North. Okay. So um, if you want to tell us. I um, I contacted, well, originally it was Scott's Tree Service, and then I, I guess they have gone into business with Marquee Tree uh, regarding um, damage. Uh, uh, we had a uh, total loss fire at the address on August 13th. Mm -hmm. I was concerned about the trees uh, because they had been severely fire damaged. The very, two very large oak trees on the lake side of the house. Um, and I was concerned that they were, they had appeared, you know, killed by the fire, I guess you could say. So I um, called the insurance company. The insurance company recommended getting a tree service to come out and evaluate them. Uh, and uh, John Marquis is an arborist who came out and looked at them and generated that letter. I then gave that letter to the insurance company. And based on, the, uh, on his opinion, the insurance company uh, was recommending to me or requesting to me that I, I have the trees removed um, and, and sooner rather than later. Um, uh, so uh, uh, that's where we're at now. I, I, was, I am on their schedule, uh, but it, they kind of left it open-ended where, you know, they give you a date and then all of a sudden they 
they kind of surprise you with a, oh, well, we're available this Friday or next Friday. So they, they had moved the date up recently. I reached out to Matt to, to you know, to say mm -hmm. this is the situation and this is where we're at. Uh, with the emergency certificate, it does need to be um, a public agent, a, a municipal or state agency needs to be the one that directs the um, emergency work to be done. We ourselves can't issue an emergency certificate. Um, I have spoken with the building commissioner who was going to take a look. I've, I will be providing him with this letter to, um, you know, as the, um, you know, where, with it being a safety issue. A, an arborist has determined that it to be hazardous. Um, but, you know, put that under building code as it was a result of the fire. Um, and um, if the commission, if it is acceptable to the commission, I would um, uh, endorse, uh, issue the in emergency certificate upon a favorable um, determination by the building commissioner and would have the commission ratify it at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, but again, continue to work with the property. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we want to work with the property owner. This is an unfortunate uh, yeah. instance. I have and, no trouble. And I did, I no I did also raise the uh, idea of, as a part of the emergency certificate, you know, replanting some trees, whether, you know, maples or some, you know, something, you yeah. know. Sort of as my yeah. only question yeah. I was going to ask your, is that, yeah, yeah. As part of your long-term plan, because I think. Yeah. You know. I spoke to Dan Doherty, the builder, mm -hmm. and he, uh, I want to make sure I uh, quote him correctly, but he said that the plan that he will be submitting will include uh, replacing more trees than we take. Okay. okay. That's, That's fine. fine. Okay. That's fine. Thank okay. You. So. Okay. Okay, so do we actually need to take a motion? No, I actually okay. don't have the okay. paperwork, and I'm waiting. I want to, okay. and if the building commissioner can't, I'll go down to the fire chief. I will get somebody, okay, to so find somebody to say. We have our this. agreement to go ahead and do it. Yeah, so that, uh, that, so that it needs to be the building commissioner or the fire department that actually is the agency that says, yeah, those trees should, come, should down. come down, and we're just, we're just on. We're on agreeing. Notice. We're agreeing. We're agreeing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're sorry. We're good. Thank you. We're sorry. Thank, Thank you. I'll be in touch. Okay, so that's that. Now we're back to the discussion items. We're on the second page. Yeah, we're in the back. Yeah, we finally got to the back. Look okay. Jeff, Jeff. Forty-eight tonight, Beth. You're freezing me. <laughs> <laughs> you want a jacket? No, I, I have my this oh, on my oh. on my legs. Thank you for that. It's it's really warm. It's like a lining. Room. Actually, somebody could close the window. Uh, Jim right. Jim already closed one for me. Yeah. Again, I yeah. It was getting warm when everybody was here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's not warm anymore. <laughs> okay. So. This should be wearing a jacket. jacket. <laughs> I have a sweater. I have I have my coat on my legs. <laughs> So 103 Lowell Road, a modification request for retaining wall material. Good evening, Jeff Hannaford representing the applicant at 103 Lowell Road. Um, we're here for this change uh, because <clears throat> along the driveway in the area, there was a crossing approved uh, on either side of the driveway and through that area, uh, the original approved plans uh, showed a concrete block retaining wall on either side of the driveway. Uh, I'm assuming the main reason for that is uh, to minimize filling, an extension of fill on the sides because of the uh, proximity of the wetlands. So to contain the fill into a smaller area and less disturbance of wetlands, they had retaining walls uh, designed. So those were below the level of the driveway. The Correct. retaining walls go down, not up. Correct. Okay. Um, it's less than four feet. Uh, it approaches four feet right where the crossing is, but then in either direction, it minimizes down to about a foot. Um, in the process of the excavation to date, uh, a number of large boulders uh, were excavated. Uh, so they asked if those could be used in lieu of the concrete blocks. Um, 
Uh, so uh, they came to me and I thought, I looked at them. I do have some photos if you want to see the size of the boulders that we're talking about. But it just seemed like it made a lot more sense to use on-site material. Uh, if they can't use them, then they're going to have to go through the exercise of uh, trucking them somewhere. Um, and, you know, from an environmental standpoint, it seemed like, you know, if we could minimize a lot of trucking back and forth and uh, to accomplish the same thing on something that doesn't require a building permit because it's it doesn't meet that height. Uh, I said it's well worth talking to the commission about doing it. So that's where it came about. Works. I'm fine with a natural boulder. Mm -hmm. So no questions from the commission? The, nope. the boulders are all wrapped in geotech fabric and then there's fill around them? Is that, is that what it showed? It's it'll, it'll be filled up against them on the driveway Between side. them and the driveway? Yep. Okay. 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 Um, any questions from the audience? Okay, so can I have a motion to grant the modification request for the rotating wall material? Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to go right to the certificate of compliance while Jeff's still in his chair? <laughs> Five Tingsboro Road. Uh, I, I was on site with uh, Jeff today as representative for the property owner, and um, the um, as-built conditions certainly are consistent with the approved plan. Um, actually, there's areas um, kind of on the. Uh, North of the structure, northwest of the structure, um, where the kind of detention basin, um, where the natural detention basin occurred, that was um, the extent of clearing was less than what was uh, originally proposed. Um, the per pavers are pervious. I recommend the commission issue this certificate of compliance for 334 16383. Okay, so can I have a motion to issue? A certificate of compliance for Chisholm 5 Tingsboro Road, DEP file number 334-1683. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy day. Thank you. <laughs> okay. My wife will be thrilled. There you go. <laughs> the applicant. The applicant. The applicant. The applicant. The applicant. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> and Summer Village. Summer Village Invasive Species Removal Progress, progress Update. Um, we have received a update from the yeah, uh, members of the uh, task force. Um, things seem to have been going well. They're hot, comp hot composting and will be either burning or disposing of the uh, waste. Is allowed. Um, I'm not understanding you. Um, <laughs> You're mumbling. <laughs> hey. yeah. Yeah. It was my hearing. I have a couple of questions from what I saw. I don't know what he said. The, I, the picture showed the, the signage that they put up, and it seemed a little bit confusing between Conservation Commission and whatever they're calling the group. Yeah, what do um, they call it? Westward Conservation Committee. That's not us. No, that's the Summer Village. Yeah. Well, no, but the Westford oh. Conservation Committee down here. I can that certainly. Is supposed to be us? Uh, most likely. We can certainly right. clarify. Th that again. was confusing a little bit. And the second was a question. In the pictures, I didn't notice any markings of the, of the ends of the property of the, th that's supposed to be done with the. Um, uh, the there was flagging harvest. out there when they started. There are flags? Okay. There, yeah. It was, I, those, those are supposed to be permanent while they're working on it, on that section, which may take several seasons. Yeah. Okay. So we can certainly. If they're yeah, there, make, I, I remember seeing them when they started. We can. And I, I think there was a photo as well of the actual markings. Uh, again, I think was, it's more true. Yellow tape was out? Yeah, I don't remember what it was now, but I. As long as it's still there and so it remains, I'm good. Was, was the area for this pilot project outside the buffer zone or inside the buffer zone? I think it was outside the buffer zone. Okay. Um, so they are looking to do more 
Um, some of it is in within the buffer zone. And as such, I've recently received an email um, looking for guidance on filing a notice of intent with the commission to do, you know, continue this yeah. pilot program within the buffer zone areas where the invasives are growing um, so that there is, you know, a an established kind of areas to be marked and identified. right right but you know but it, more so in terms of the review by the commission it's you know much like the nab improvement associations here's what we're going to do here's the kind of here's the rules that we're going to you know the established and kind of uh you know we'll provide notice of what we're doing at the beginning of the year you know follow up uh at the end and so that's um, kind of the next uh, uh, part to this, but I think they have, uh, they have, you know, it seems like the first little pilot area seemed Working to good. seem to work well. So let's, <laughs> you know, you. hopefully it's done. Well, and, and job. one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of when they do their NOI filing is, is there's the likelihood with invasives that they start to find, you know, over time they find more places that they want that they need to address. Um, if those places include in the conservation restriction area, when we do the review of the NOI filing, is it something where we can basically have the parameters in place so that buffer zone and CR areas? I think we can, you know, have a public hearing uh, similar. I think it was to Polar Bear, the gentleman who wanted to cut down a couple trees. Um, at the back of his property and also kind of right at the line of the conservation restriction um and you know we held the public you know we held the the discussion for the commission to approve the cutting down of the trees on the cr first and then you know there was the public hearing for so we can have kind of that same um but i think we can also include that in the noi you know where in you know as things as the project and the maintenance of the invasives evolves um, you know, give them a mechanism so that, you know, ultimately the approvals for the property, but, you know, we'll have yearly updates as to where they're targeting. And, you know, if they find something new and want to address a pioneer infestation, being able to aggressively and timely manage it as opposed to, you know, kind of waiting to get onto a commission's agenda or something like that. Um, I think we can have kind of both approvals um, kind of work hand in hand so that the once they get into it and we get used to it you know we'll figure out something to expedite I think. exactly yeah i mean one of my biggest concerns was they were going to hand all the 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 stuff they pulled off to their um their trash service and it's like the, no, the, that's... the yard waste the guy yeah. the guy doing yard waste is probably doing composting and the next yeah thing, yeah yeah, you know, yeah just you know like, we put like oh we can't else, uh. yeah so yeah so I think, you know, I think we've, we've got... I think it's a learning process. It's such a hard thing, the invasives. Yep. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think we've, we've got a good working relationship going with them. Um, so, yeah, so that should be coming down the pike. Um, and no site visits to record, no site visits to schedule. Um, Executive session. Yep, the executive Thank session. You. So, okay. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Okay.